COVID-19 pandemic unfolds, journalists on the beat can't switch off and the work would be overwhelming. Despite the global stress, Wendy Lyre reports the work must go on. This is Media General's newsroom. Eileen staff on duty. This is not the number on a normal day, but we definitely are not in normal times. We all need to stay safe by practicing social distancing. But the work must go on. Prior to Ghana recording cases, our reporters spread across the country developed stories related to coronavirus. Technology is being utilized. News anchors on different platforms and other essential departments work hard to bring the public up-to-date news. How has journalism been impacted by the pandemic? Two journalists, a Rwandan and Palestinian, share their experiences. Both countries are under lockdown. Only essential service providers are allowed to get out of their homes. So these people who are allowed to get out of their houses and drive around have stickers issued by the police. Working hours, it's paced on shafts, dividing uh, throughout the 14 days uh, between uh, the employee uh, some employees will work 14 days and while others are uh, right now in quarantine, then everyone uh, will swap shifts. What about safety measures? The Palestine TV uh, has distributed special uniforms that protect uh, the journalists and cameramen uh, who are working uh, in the streets and I feel safe. I feel safer when I'm working from home and I feel not safe enough when I'm on field because I tend to touch many objects. I tend to share a microphone with people. According to the Global Investigative Network, topics that have been heavily covered include government's preparedness, hospital readiness, the supply of equipment, officials telling the truth, and commercial exploitation. On March 23, Reuters.com reported of a White House reporter suspected of having contracted the coronavirus. The White House Correspondents Association raised questions about the viability of press briefings that gather dozens of journalists and the Trump administration officials in a single room each day. CNN on March 24 reported on a prominent 30-year-old television journalist who died in Zimbabwe after contracting COVID-19, the first person to die in the country from the virus. Zororo Makamba was one of the two people who tested positive for the coronavirus. NBC News on March 20 reported the death of its longtime employee, Larry Edgeworth, 61, an audio technician, but also suffered from other health issues, according to his wife. For instance, journalists who are assigned to Ghana's Parliament House are still reporting from there as the House is still in session, although some parliamentarians have been asked to self-isolate. We are not too sure who we have come into contact with. The reports are quite numerous flying in here and there. Looking at the nature of our work as journalists, we need to get the job done. The speaker, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, asked all staff except those identified as providing essential services critical to the legislative business currently taking place in the House or a matter referred by the House for an urgent consideration to proceed on their annual leave with immediate effect. All officers on contract or temporary appointment, MP research assistants and other ancillary service providers working in the premises are also required to take their leave or keep away in a bid to decongest parliament for a safe conduct of essential business. Despite the adrenaline to get the work done, fatigue sets in. The Ghana Journalists Association is advising journalists to adhere to health and safety protocols. But for the journalists reporting on the outbreak, it is indeed overwhelming. When you say a prayer, remember to say one for journalists as well. Wendy Lai, TV3 News.